Bible. Please listen and learn now. The word of God has come. Every time you open scripture, there are three things that you are looking out for. Number one, you are looking for promises. Please say after me, promises. Every time you open scripture, what you are searching for are promises. Promises represent the boundary of God's commitment to the believer as far as your earth work is concerned. God is almighty, but the system of administering his love and his power is with respect to the provisions that scripture has allowed. God cannot bless a man outside of the allowance that scripture gives. Listen, this is very powerful because this is where if you do not understand this, eventually you will get into superstition. God can do many things, all things, but the operation of Jesus Christ as revealed from scripture is based on the truths of scripture. That means if you want to know how far God can go over your life, find what he has said here. God is only committed to what he has said, not what you want. God is not committed to what you want. He's only committed to what you want if what you want is consistent with what he has said. If your needs have no provision here in scripture, then it will not come to pass. Are we blessed now? Herein lies our confidence as matured believers. It is not longevity in church that makes for maturity. It's the awareness that God does not lie. He's a God of integrity. He's also a God of ability. Are we together? And that on the strength of the immutability of his counsel, if we can find what he said, then we can commit him. Please give us Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. God only does what he said. And the Lord visited Sarah. Please read with me. One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah. Not as Sarah wanted. The Lord did not do to Sarah as she wanted. He did to Sarah as she said. Verse 2 same scripture for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time which god had spoken listen carefully this is already a deliverance for someone that means every time you write a prayer request don't you think that because you prayed on it it will be answered the first requirement is that you must connect every request to the scripture that gives you a guarantee that God is. This is why scriptureless prayer is useless prayer. It's just a dissipation of energy, except if you are praying in tongues. When you are praying a wordless, a prayer that is not word-based, there is no scriptural platform for God to be committed. Listen to me. God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but he's moved by his word. Just because he has compassion towards you does not mean things will be solved. He himself has chosen to submit to his word that he exalts his word above his name. If someone learning, this is sound doctrine. This is how believers become matured. All these superstitious things sometimes flying around is why a lot of people are puffed up with knowledge that does not produce predictable spiritual results. There is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth. Are we learning? So the Bible contains promises. What has God said concerning me? God has spoken so many things concerning us. What has he said? It is your assignment to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to find it. They are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. And those who find, receive finding as a harvest for seeking. Because the Bible says the law is that everyone that seeketh findeth. Finding is not for men of God. Finding is not for those in ministry. Finding is for seekers. 
if you seek you will find I want to rise in life and destiny oh God I know I can't be a failure what is your basis bring forth your strong reasons what is your basis I'm tired of suffering no no that's not the basis for victory what has the Bible said the Bible says the path of the just for instance is as a shining light are you learning now that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that becomes your scripture of defense father on the basis of this truth and on the basis of your integrity I place a demand for the performance of this scripture in my life now you that is how to pray the kind of prayer that produces result blind scripturist lamentation will only the Holy Ghost will just come to comfort you because he's a comforter but as far as results listen listen as far as results are concerned believe me if you do not know how to engage scripture you may live a frustrated Christian life are we together so you find in scripture promises number two what do you find every time you open scripture principles principles the second thing you find in scripture are principles the modus operandi of the kingdom this is how the kingdom operates Christianity operates based on a kingdom system and every kingdom has rules of engagement there is a way God behaves there is a way for instance in Nigeria as a federation and in many many nations across the world there is a way that you want if you want to approach the president or anyone in the presidency there is a protocol is that true if different states want to receive their subvention there is a system a modus operandi so if you become a governor or a commissioner of finance or whatever it is you are enlightened and educated that as far as this territory is concerned this is how you obtain the things that you need to obtain failure to know it you may have a territory that has the resources but it may not reach you everybody say principles principles are called the secrets of the kingdom or the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 and verse 11 the Bible says Jesus was speaking and here's what he said because it is given unto you to know to know the word know there is not just the word awareness it's not mere awareness it's a level of intimacy It's the same word that is used as a husband knowing his wife to know to so interact that you become one with the mysteries of the kingdom what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people the military for instance they operate by mysteries they have how they talk there is something that the military can say that if you are a civilian and you are not trained you may not understand what they are saying you would have to be trained in the military for that conversation to be fruitful to you so in this kingdom the bible exposes us to the mysteries of the kingdom i pray and i beseech you by the message of god that you pay attention and take serious what i'm sharing with you these are the weapons of victory we have been given in this kingdom there is no other way we command results outside of this it is not one of the ways it is the way The mysteries of the kingdom so when I open my Bible hidden in stories hidden in parables hidden in riddles hidden in the Psalms the five books of Moses all of them reveal Jesus the way there is something in the Pentateuch that reveals the character of Jesus and the modus operandi of the kingdom are we together when you go to the prophets major and minor there are things you find the poetic books there are revelations of jesus that you find scattered across psalms is a, a spiritual protocols for accessing different dimensions of results proverbs comes to reveal the wisdom of the kingdom as far as living and excelling is concerned you now go to the gospels where jesus himself came as the manifestation of god 
I've told you why Jesus came to the earth. Jesus came to the earth not just to save us. His number one assignment when he came to the earth was as a correction of our idea about God. The God that people did not know because until then they had not seen him manifest bodily. So there were many ideas that the prophets, they depended on the interpretation of the prophets to know God. They couldn't have a personal relationship because the Holy Spirit was not given to all. It was Prophet Joel that said one day this formula for knowledge will be obsolete because the Holy Spirit will be poured upon all flesh. And at that time, he will give the fivefold to mature the saints. But as far as personal relationship is concerned, that veil will be torn. Are we together now? Are you learning? Yes. So when Jesus came, he came primarily as a correction of our idea he came as a marking script so that we now compare everything the prophets told us about him with the manifestation of jesus and look you now see why the father had to approve him before he started because if the father did not approve him that meant that any other thing he did before the father spoke we can say is wrong from the time the father spoke till jesus went to heaven we know that everything he did was correct because the father spoke already that i am pleased with him so when we see the father say i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my kindness we have a right to not believe the father until we verify that statement in the life of jesus did jesus demonstrate the love of the father such the scripture so you find out that he showed compassion by feeding people physically he showed compassion by feeding people spiritually when he met a prostitute at the well he did not throw her inside the well is that true he sat down and had a conversation with her when he met publicans and sinners how did he behave so we can now verify that god is love because jesus manifested it once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god we have a right to say god you are a liar until we verify in the life of jesus did we see the power of god demonstrated in the life of jesus read your bible the testament is there for your vetting we see all kinds of signs and wonders we sing songs what manner of man is jesus he parted the sea he did all sorts of things so by the manifestation of the life of jesus we can safely conclude that God is all-powerful because we do not see any impossibility that happened to Jesus except the time when he could not do any miracle and the Bible took responsibility to tell us why if the Bible left us in darkness we we'll say God there is something you cannot do but the Bible tells us that the reason why Jesus could not do this is because of their unbelief that he himself marveled at their unbelief And the Bible, Paul himself was buttressing on that and said there still remain a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, they have not entered their Sabbath. What was the limitation? That they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Not mixed with faith. What is faith? Your conviction and the corresponding action you take to honor that conviction. They did not act on what they heard. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his person the name given to the action not just the believing they could not enter his rest and he encourages us he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness he says there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god are you still in church so when you open the bible can i tell you this this is the reason why believers who do not study the Bible, believers who do not listen to teachings, believers who do not engage in the ministry of the word will not only be the first to be deceived, they will be the first to be destroyed. Because there is no basis for your security. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is God already speaking to someone? Believe me, if I stop here tonight, I am still satisfied. Promises, 
principles. Why do we fail in life? Largely because of Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. The limitation is not God's ability. The limitation is knowledge. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in. You now see why the worship team was shouting it as our faces that there must be light tonight. And I agree with them, there must be light over your destiny in the name of Jesus. Listen, believers, listen. Get tired of ignorance. Get tired of shadow boxing. You must be able to know with exactitude the spiritual principles that are connected to the outcomes you desire. This is what mastery is about in the kingdom. And the Bible says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. Everybody who gets to that final round of the Olympic was a champion in his own nation. Yet someone still takes last in that race. That means the person was a champion but not champion enough at a global scale. So don't just say you are better than someone because you have two unserious Christians around and you are the one teaching them. By what reference do you think you are serious? They comparing themselves with themselves, the Bible says, are not wise. You must raise a high spiritual bar. Can I tell you this? Those who win the 100 meters race are never trained with 100 meters. No. If you want to win 100 meters, you train 